number 021 by the Senator for Nairobi City County, the Honorable Senator Edwin Sifuna. Honorable Senator, you may now proceed to ask your question. Uh, morning, uh, Honorable Speaker. Perhaps just some guidance uh, on how we treat witnesses before they take the stand. Is that not uh, necessary this morning? Pardon? Is it not necessary to treat the witness uh, properly? before they start answering questions? By treating the witnesses, what, what do you mean, uh, Senator? So, 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 to, <laughs> not T, so subjecting them to uh, Article 125, Honorable Speaker. But it's, 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 it's up to you. Well, this is not the first time we are having such a session. We shall proceed as we always do. Very well, Honorable Speaker. It's just that uh, out of abundance of caution, we require that people be put under oath for the truthfulness to come out. It's a terrible time for truthful men. Honorable Speaker, the question to the Cabinet Secretary responsible for the National Treasury and Economic Planning. Number one, what has occasioned the failure by the eCitizen digital platform to process and reflect payments made to some institutions such as the National Health Insurance Fund. This is a defunct NHIF Honorable Speaker. And could the Cabinet Secretary explain steps taken to remedy the situation? Number two, where does the convenience fee charged and all other payments that fail to reflect on the platform end up? Thirdly, Honorable Speaker, could the Cabinet Secretary report on the safety, efficiency, efficacy, and reliability of the e-citizen digital payment platform in light of the numerous complaints of delays and technical issues that followed the onboarding of significant number of government services on the platform. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable CSU may now proceed to respond. Um, Honorable Speaker of the Senate, I want to thank you and uh, begin by saying that it's really refreshing to be back here wearing a different cap uh, Mr. Speaker, you may recall we were with you in the 10th Parliament that the better part of the 10th Parliament we spent in this chamber as the other one was being renovated. But having said that, uh, Mr. Speaker, again allow me to uh, register my apologies because last time I was supposed to appear before the Senate, I got engaged and I didn't, I didn't appear before the Senate. I want to just point out that I was so prepared to come and answer to these questions on that day up to the last evening to the day when now um, His Excellency the President uh, gave the nod that you'd meet the World Bank team that was here and just had a few hours uh, left to leave the country led by the Vice President of the World Bank. And so that is why I wrote a letter late to request that uh, uh, the session be or my appearance be rescheduled to another date. It was no, in no way trying to undermine the responsibility of this House in terms of discharging its mandate as an oversighting institution. I have been around uh, here for 17 years and I know the value of the two houses in oversighting the executive. I, would, I wouldn't do, have done anything to the contrary. The fact, two days before uh, the scheduled date, I appeared before Senate Committee on Finance and Budget uh, on a matter touching on my ministry. And even after that, I again appeared before Senate Committee on Transport, again answering e questions relating to issues touching on my ministry. So, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to start from there. Uh, having said that, Mr. Speaker, allow me now to respond to the question, that is uh, question number 021 by the Senator for Nairobi City County, Senator Edwin Sifuna, who asked me to address three pertinent issues relating to e-citizen.